In this video, we will continue to look at vectors. We will look at vectors with a different line of actions, and of course, um, in particular, perpendicular vectors. All right? So we'll be looking at vectors with different lines of actions, and of course, we'll be focusing on perpendicular vectors. So we're going to be looking at adding perpendicular vectors. Now, at the CSEC or O levels, when it came to adding vectors which are not in a straight line um, at some angle, then you'd have basically used the parallelogram law. And according to the parallelogram law, if two vectors acting at a point are represented in both magnitude and direction by the size of a parallelogram drawn to scale and from the point, then the diagonal of the parallelogram represents the magnitude of the resultant. Now, the parallelogram law basically implies that um, scale drawing would have been used, but of course at this level, we won't be applying scale drawing, but we'll be using more mathematical methods, right? So, if two vectors are perpendicular, then typically we will use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate their magnitude, and of course, a trigonometric ratio to find their um, direction. So let's look at a quick example. Suppose we have two forces acting on an object like this. So this force is of magnitude 3 newtons acting in that direction. And this force is of magnitude 4 newton acting in that direction. Right? Now usually we tend to redraw our diagram. So the vectors are in this case, well in this case forces, they run from tip to tail. And once we do that basically we can complete our vector triangle which essentially is a half of the vector is, is a half of the parallelogram and that will basically tell us show us the resultant and the direction in which it runs as well so we can just redraw this so we will have our 4 newton force and our um, 3 newton force but just to be consistent since one is larger we we'll try to represent that using um, a longer arrow right so if this is our 4 newton force and this is our 3 newton force then the resultant is the hypotenuse of the triangle and so we can actually complete our triangle and this will represent our resultant we can label it fr right so we'll use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate the um the magnitude of the resultant but we'll also need to calculate the direction which is usually given as an angle with respect to either the horizontal or to the vertical, right? In most cases, the angle is given with respect to the horizontal, but it can also be given with respect to the vertical, right? Now, let's calculate the magnitude of this resultant. Now, if you recall, according to Pythagoras' theorem, um, in any right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, which is of course the longest side, equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Now, when dealing with um, vectors, example forces, these can be used to represent the sides of a triangle, and as such, if they form a right angle triangle, then you can actually apply Pythagoras' theorem, right? So by Pythagoras' theorem, the resultant force, fr squared, is equal to four squared plus three squared. So therefore, fr squared is equal to 16, plus 9 fr squared is equal to 25 and therefore fr is equal to the root of 25 which of course is equal to 5 newtons so the magnitude of the resultant is equal to 5 newtons but of course if you recall force is a vector quantity and not only must it have a magnitude it must also have a direction and therefore we must not only calculate the magnitude but we must calculate the direction as well, right? So to calculate the direction, we will use a trig ratio since we're dealing with a right angle triangle in which we know of all three sides. Typically, we use the tan ratio since we will have the opposite as well as the adjacent. So according to the tangent ratio, tan of angle theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So we have tan theta 
is equal to 3 over 4 or 0 0.75 and therefore theta is equal to the tan inverse of 0 0.75 and we'll go to our calculators and we work out that angle right so tan inverse of 0 0.75 that gives us second function tan 0.75 so that gives us 36.9 degrees right so the angle is 36.9 degrees now if we want to state the resultant together with its magnitude and direction we'd say that fr equals 5 newtons at 36.9 degrees to the horizontal or we could say to the 4 newton force so having made that statement we've stated our resultant force we've stated its magnitude as well as its direction